YouTube! Hello! Ah, oh, just back from work, actually, and it's it's been a very good day of work, really, because I got to go and see The Dark Knight Rises as a matter of my work today. The uh, the client um, that I was looking after today um, wanted to go and see The Dark Knight Rises, so we did. Um, interesting bit of work. Certainly very interesting. Quite provocative, really. Arguably more so than the previous installments in the franchise. Um... Overall, I think that the Nolan Batman franchise is some of the best comic book adaptations going. Simply because they do away with so much that is comic book. They do away with a lot of the um, the conventions of comic book fiction. And that will determine, I imagine, whether you like them, um, how you regard them, whether you are more of a purist, whether you enjoy the comic, comic book movies for having very comic booky elements, or whether you you want to see something a little more abstruse from the material, whether you want the subject matter to be expanded to incorporate new ideas and new modes of storytelling, which is where I come from, certainly. I'm not interested in seeing blow-by-blow um, -blow adaptations of comic book um, characters. Certainly not superheroes. Um, there are There is good fiction to be had in uh, superhero comics. They are out there, definitely. But, by and large, it's one of those uh, mediums and one of those traditions that's so utterly saturated because of the rate of stories that have to be put out. It's so utterly saturated with um, alternative timelines, various different universes and incarnations of characters, so many different stories that the stories have become very, uh, very formulaic very conciliatory. They tend to be very conservative mainstream comic books as well uh, in terms of the ideas they play with and the uh, the outcomes that occur as a result of whatever occurs. Um, take Spider-Man for example. There are certain things that Spider-Man will not do. You will never, and I mean never, see Spider-Man losing it completely and murdering the villains in cold blood. You will never see Spider-Man <clears throat> doing what any sane person would have done by now, killing the Green Goblin, for example, making sure he is fucking dead. Not that it really means much uh, with regards to the Green Goblin, because the Green Goblin is one of those annoying characters who is practically immortal. He's died any number of times, <clears throat> usually by some accident that he brings upon himself, and then is resurrected so many issues later. Um, usually by very questionable means, um, the, the most infamous being that it wasn't really him, that it was either some clone or construct or something to that effect. Uh, it's, it's annoying, it's insulting. Um, but you will never see characters step outside particular margins or parameters. You'll never see the story progress. They always operate within very particular parameters and arenas. That's the that's both the joy of them and it's their strength, but it's also part of their weakness. It means that the stories that can be told are ultimately limited. There's only so far you can go with these characters before you have to stop, before you hit a wall of imagination, and you cannot go any further. Um... The Nolan movies are really interesting in that they take Batman out of that. They take the Batman universe out of those parameters um, and place and deliberately provide situations where the parameters have to be broken. Um, the Dark Knight is a really good example of this. It, 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 one could one could certainly argue quite coherently, I think, that the the Dark Knight, um, the last Batman movie in Nolan's franchise, is quite right wing. Uh, quite conservative in another way, in, in terms of its politics, not in terms of the way it utilises Batman, but in terms of its politics. The way Batman defeats the Joker ultimately is by invading the privacies of Gotham, um, by disallow, by basically just disregarding any rights that the citizens of Gotham have. Um, by use of that bat cell net thing, which basically allows him to spy on anyone. It's a very, very thin metaphor for um, surveillance, for governmental and authoritarian surveillance. Um, and this movie, <clears throat> The Dark Knight Rises, it takes that even further. There are ideas here. That's what's so wonderful about the Nolan movies. They take 
what is ostensibly comic book and they elevate them to another plane. There are ide genuine ideas to be played about with here. It's not like, for example, The Amazing Spider-Man, which I saw recently, which is quite a fun film for what it is. It's n There's nothing terribly amazing about it. It's a very ordinary film with very ordinary ambitions. It's just the spider it's just the Spider-Man story, i.e. the origin story told again for the millionth time. Um and it's just a comic book movie in the sense that it's about spectacle, it's about the sort of fetishism of those stories where they they hit all the right beats, they have all the the familiar characterizations and so on and so forth rather than doing anything new with the character which it doesn't. Um the Batman, the Nolan Batman movies do the exact opposite. They, they do things that are very questionable. They deliberately have characters doing things that are very questionable. Batman, uh, not least of which. Um, and in The Dark Knight, Bat in The Dark Knight Rises, what we have is something that's very reflective of political and sociocultural movements that are happening now. Things like um, Occupy Wall Street, for example, there is there are moments of this movie that are redolent of almost like a sort of um, a civil uprising. Bane, the um, ostensibly the the lead villain of the piece, um, markets himself as a sort of revolutionary figure. It's not who he is. It's certainly not who he represents. It's not the philosophy he represents in the same way that the Joker represents complete and utter anarchy. Um, this is not what Bane represents. This is a part that he's playing. What he actually represents, ironically, is a, a very extreme kind of order. A very It's, it's right-wing even beyond what Batman wants to impose. It's the it's an almost revolu it's a broader scope of justice that he represents he it's it's exactly the same as the as um the league of shadows from the first movie batman begins and uh, ra's al ghul which is where you they take an almost historical view of how cultures and societies work that they require um periodic des uh, desolation they require undoing destroying completely to be rebuilt again it, otherwise they tend to ferment they tend to um, stagnate that's basically what Bane is trying to do um, he regards Gotham as unsalvageable it's something that has to be reduced to ash but in the interests of doing that there is a point where he basically plays a role he markets himself as a sort of revolutionary liberator and the people who flock to his banner are more than a little redolent of the Occupy Wall Street protesters, um, the Occupy movement in general, and the wa the manner in which the movie attempt it it does to a very real degree demonize these movements and um, lionizes systems of authority like the Batman, like um, the police force, and so on, law and order, and politicians, and so on and so forth. It's not um, it's not clear cut in terms of its politics. There are there are questions that are raised, even of characters that you may actually like. It's quite brave in that regard. There are moments where characters the audience has been preconditioned to enjoy, to like, and to identify with, actually reveal themselves as questioning their motivations for doing things that in the previous movie seemed to be quite heroic. This movie is about showing you the consequences of what ostensibly seems to be noble in the previous movies. You have to regard it as part of a continuity, even more so than The Dark Knight um, as a, a progression of Batman Begins. Those two can be watched in isolation. This one, I would say you need to watch it with the other movies in mind, very much so, in order to get what's going on with the characters. You could actually watch, very, very easily, you could watch The Dark Knight and this movie in one long go, and it would work. It would work really well. The only difference is the tone. There is a different tone in this movie from the previous movies. Um, even as, as black as the Dark Knight got in terms of its ideas and the things it was willing to portray, this movie is even darker. This movie almost does away completely with any comic book conventions. There are only one or two bits and pieces that are slightly more comic book um, than one, one might expect, given the tone of the opening scenes. 
even the rhythm of the movie isn't the rhythm of a comic book movie. It's the rhythm of a very slow burning um, socio political drama. Uh, there, there isn't. It, it takes a long time for anything to happen beyond characters engaging, uh, beyond Nolan attempting to set up what's happened in this universe since the Dark Knight. And it does it very well. It does it beautifully well, actually. It doesn't, in terms of filmmaking, this movie is really well put together, as one would expect from a Christopher Nolan piece. The storytelling is very, very brief and very economical. It it, it, give, it feeds you information very quickly, very visually, without a great deal of um, preamble or overemphasis on particular points. It does not overemphasize itself. That's something I really appreciate as a cinema goer. I certainly appreciate it from a mainstream movie, which tend to be... They tend to emphasize a certain kind of storytelling, which is they treat the audience like fucking imbeciles. They treat us as if we, we have no sense of... Uh, we cannot take implication, we have no sense of inference, we cannot take subtlety in storytelling. This is something Nolan does not do. The movie is very subtle at times. There are visual cues and symbols, recurrent symbols, that you need to be aware of um, in order to understand what's happening. Uh, in thematically alone, there's a lot of very broad themes that were, be that were started in Batman Begins, but which are being tied up here. Um, that you need to be aware of. In fact, if you're going to see it, I would seriously advise watching the previous two movies beforehand because they, they really do work as a continuity, as one big story. They work really well. Um, but the upshot of that is that there is a great deal of subtle information packed into very tight spaces. There are a lot of story arcs in this movie. Um... And a lot of themes that play out, lots of different subtle character arcs that are complete in and of themselves. You know, they occur exclusively within this movie. There are several characters who turn up in this movie who are key to the story, but which only occur in this movie. Um, and they're tied, they're, they're tied up very well. They're tied up very, very well. But you need to be on the game. This movie forces you to engage with it on a thematic level and also... Um, in terms of just the raw storytelling. If you don't engage, if, for example, if you get up and go to the, the concession stand or if you go to the toilet or something, you're going to miss something vital. And when you come back, it's likely you'll have missed several significant scenes. Um, and you won't have a fucking clue what's going on. You really won't. It's a complex movie. There's a lot going on. Um, the performances are very good. Almost universally. I mean, there's some really excellent bit performances here. Uh, I don't like, I still don't like um, Christian Bale's growly, gravelly Batman voice, and there is a moment in it where it sounds really bad. It does sound awful, actually, and that's the only really weak link. It's fine as Bruce Wayne. I, I actually really like Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne. And this movie has gone pretty much full circle in the sense that whereas uh, you had the Batman Begins focusing on the Batman and Bruce Wayne on that dichotomy, then you had the Dark Knight focusing on a villain, i.e., the Joker, uh, villains rather, uh, the Joker and Harvey Dent. Here it's gone full circle and it's come back to the Batman again. It's come back to what it means to be Batman, what it means to be uh, Bruce Wayne and how those two interact with one another and in the world that's been established. Uh, and it's very satisfying in that regard. There is a great sense of balance to things uh, when you regard this as a movie trilogy. There's a great sense of narrative and poetic balance that works really well. The politics of the movie are questionable. The implications of the movie are questionable. It is not an absolute thing. Though I stated earlier that there is something uh, sort of uh, right-wing about its politics, and there is. And there is also something questionable about the manner in which it portrays um, socio-political uprisings, revolutions, and so on and so forth. It's, there's something quite conservative about that. I'd argue that that isn't necessarily... Um, the nature of the movie as such. It's not something that's inherent to the movie, it's something that's inherent to the source material. It's uh, it's what comic books are, it's certainly what Batman is. Batman's a very conservative superhero um, in terms of what he implies, and that's what this movie is playing out thematically. He is basically a rich boy who goes around saving everyone um, from a poor criminal underclass. 
and that's what you've got going on here. Um, but even within, even given that scale, there are questions that are raised about more conservative authority structures, certainly about the police force, about politicians and uh, military and so on and so forth. There's quite a lot going on here. There's quite a lot to engage with. It's very refreshing. It's very pleasant to see a mainstream movie that people are going to see playing with big ideas. And playing with big ideas in such a manner that people are going to be able to engage with them. This is what Nolan is, has done with the previous two Batman films. It's certainly what he's done with um, Inception and practically everything he's ever made. He does this thing, Nolan. He's a clever bastard. He really is. He's a subtle, clever bastard. He infiltrates what are essentially art house movies, what are movies that deal with very big philosophical ideas um, under the radar. He smuggles them into the mainstream under the guise of being big budget summer blockbusters. It's very clever. It's very, very clever. So he basically he does what the, what the Matrix did. He makes people engage with big ideas, whether they want to or not. Um, and that's a very clever thing to do, and I really, I really must applaud him for not treating his audience like fucking idiots, which the vast majority of mainstream uh, Hollywood cinema does. Um, there are problems with the movie, definitely. Uh, uh, beyond the aforementioned um, socio-political elements, which you may, I mean, it depends on your particular perceptions. You may see none of this when you go and see the movie, but what I got from it, what I certainly saw, was a a kind of um, leaning towards the conservative uh, commentary on, on the Occupy movement, which does very much tie in with the justifications for authoritarian surveillance from the previous movies, certainly from The Dark Knight, which basically says that there are people who are so dangerous that the public need to have their rights violated in order to protect them. It's a very conservative narrative in that regard. Um, and whether you agree with that or not, whether that makes the hackles raise on the back of your neck or not, depends largely upon your biases. Um, in terms of the movie as a movie, I think it's very successful. It's a very successfully told story with engaging characters, interesting subplots, um, very clear but complex themes. And it's very enjoyable to watch. Uh, it doesn't feel like two and a half hours. It's two hours forty five minutes actually. It's close to the three hours mark. It doesn't feel like that at all. Prometheus felt far fucking longer than that because it was such a terrible movie. Um, it's ver it's definitely worth going to see as the closing chapter in a trilogy of comic book movies. This is one of the best out there. As I as I, I had no doubt it would be. Um, great faith in Nolan in his ability as a filmmaker great faith indeed it's not for my money i think which of these movies you enjoy the best will depend upon um a great a great deal of your very personal tastes and preconceptions i prefer the dark knight to this movie simply because they although this movie i'd argue is much more coherent than the dark knight and much more successful as a movie in terms of its technicalities the way it's put together the Dark Knight has more going for it. I think The Dark Knight, for me, is much braver. The Dark Knight has more engaging characters. The The dynamic, the dichotomy between the order um, and authority and the conservatism uh, that is manifested in Batman, as opposed to the anarchy, the chaos, the the lack of restraint, the, the willingness to see things crumble, in order to embrace a new dynamic represented by the Joker is a really interesting one. With the other characters slip sliding up and down in the middle, you know, characters like Chief Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Dent and so on and so forth. I found that dynamic to work to be much more engaging than the dynamic in the uh, in Batman: uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Much more engaging. Even so, this is probably one of the best movies that's out there at the moment. It's at the cinema at the moment. It's certainly one of the best summer blockbusters we've had for a very, very long time. It's uh, it's a very good movie. He's done what very few people before have done, uh, Christopher Nolan. He has created the successful comic book trilogy of movies, where every movie is good in and of itself, and also... Um, 
works as part of the wider, the overarching story. Kudos, you know, bravo, very well done to uh, to Christopher Nolan. And I, after this and after every other bloody film that is made, I mean, Christopher Nolan, even the films he's, he's made that aren't as successful, he's like he's like Cronenberg. Even the films he's made that aren't as successful are interesting. They're still engaging. Um, this is this is a really good film really good and for my money simply because of what it tries to do because of its ambition i like it better than than the avengers for example which we got i i liked the avengers very much i think the avengers is a great pure comic book movie um but this movie this appeals to my tastes more because this is a movie about ideas whereas the avengers is just vacuous fluff you know it's just a comic book movie um it's brilliant it's very well done in that regard and what it sets out to do it does so beautifully well um but this movie, um, no, this I enjoyed. 